right there. I guess we could shift gears and talk, talk about uh, nightwear. Um, yeah, what was the uh, cliche question? What was inspiration, motivation behind this? <laughs> that one, you know, I, I honestly don't know where the original inspiration came from because that, that idea is so old. I came up with that book idea back when I was still editing Covenant. So that tells you how old it was. And because I knew it was, it's basically the sex club from hell kind of book. I mean, it's, okay. it's a, a, a husband and wife are into the swinger scene and well, she goes, not? I mean, that's, that's how you well, keep it lively, right? <laughs> <laughs> but she goes way, way deeper than him. I mean, she likes the violence and, and, and he basically is, they're lured into this strange club that only appears once a month and you have to have an invitation to even find it. Um, and Wait, are they, are they careful about the once a month thing? I mean, do they time it right? So that, <laughs> that way she's not on her flow or is that part of it too? <laughs> No, it's, it's, it's kind of the Brigadoon of demonic uh, sex clubs, I think. Okay. Um, and it's sort of, you know, the husband is basically ultimately in the position of trying to go into hell to save his wife. It's, it's a little bit of a Greek myth uh, play there. Okay. But <laughs> nothing like the Greek myths. In, He's in trying to go to hell to save his wife through a sex club. I well, got to yeah. fuck all these chicks to go to hell so I can save you, baby. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying to save you. <laughs> um, but that, you know, the the content and and what I knew that book had what I knew had to be in that book in order for it to be the story. I was afraid to write for the longest time. I wrote several novels before I even would approach it, and even when I was writing it, I was thinking of writing it under a pseudonym, um, because that was that was actually one I wrote after the five book uh, mass market deal had ended because Leisure Books collapsed. I had. You know, I really was, I didn't have a publisher for a while. And when I landed, um, I followed my editor to Sam Hain. Um, and he said, what do you want to write? And I was like, how about we finally do that crazy ass book? <laughs> do that crazy and ass book? Which, which is, I mean, I don't see anything in your, in your uh, catalog that seems like it's geared for kids or any, anyone that would be like a prude about, you know, erotica horror stuff. No. <laughs> No, but this one is definitely the 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 most. Mm. Now, did you have any trouble with like Kindle or I'm sorry, Amazon like like blocking the book or anything? No, because it was it was put out through a big enough publisher that, you know, it was just it was just part of a line. Um mm. it's never had any issues there. Uh it actually also got picked up for translation in Germany. Nice. Um, and it's it's actually sold, I think, more copies in Germany than it has in oh, the of course, U.S. Yeah. They like that BDSM fisting stuff. I haven't read Nightwear yet. Is there fisting in was, Nightwear? I, I, I can't even answer that. Do you know what fisting depends. is? Depends. I do, and it depends how you define it. Um, and I'm just... Oh. No. Okay. You don't want to define it here on the show. Okay. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll skip on that one. Um, okay, but Nightwear. Ah. Uh, well, um, no, there's, there are more copies out in Germany and it just came out in a Polish edition in March. So nice done really well. And there's, you have multiple books in this series. I really liking the covers too. It's they're very, well, no, no, it's not a series. So it's that's why I sent you all. No, I sent you all the covers cause each of those is a different edition. So, oh wow. Okay. Okay. There was I, the original Sam Hain cover and then there was, uh, there was a limited edition cover, which is the more cartoony cover. Hmm. Um, and then there was a German cover, a Polish cover. And then when Sam Hain ultimately went belly up, um, I reissued uh, the book on my own dark arts wow. imprint. Have it's you thought about turning it into a series? I mean, is, it seems like it's that popular. I wrote a long novelette that's, uh, that follows it. Um, it's called Field of Flesh. Uh, so that's out there, and I've really I've wanted to write a prequel ultimately, um, and I've got an outline for it. It's just been hard because the original publisher's gone, and it's not something I want to write and self-publish. So now that is a pretty good title. the 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 flesh title that field of flesh. Well, that relates flesh. to yeah. There is a field of flesh in the novel Nightwear, so that's a that's a direct mm. lean towards that. That's pretty cool. Um, were there, are there any uh, chances for becoming a, like a, a movie or getting some sort of a deal or anything 
uh, like like a Netflix thing? It would be NC seventeen if it was. Uh. <laughs> so maybe uh, <laughs> maybe Pornhub or something. <laughs> There was there was someone who who wanted to write a script for it and then he disappeared. So uh, yeah, I I, I kind of doubt that that's the one that's going to get produced. If any get produced, I've had options on a couple of things that ended up not okay. panning out. But now you probably get this question a lot with this book, um, and I hate this question too. But I'm going to ask anyway because I hate cancel culture and all that. But um, given the political climate, how people are so touchy feely about uh, content anymore. Do you get any problems with this book, Nightwear? I get problems with all my books anymore. Um, <laughs> uh, Which the means first you're time writing I, good stuff. That that just means you're writing good stuff, honestly. Yeah. I, first time it, I saw it surface was a couple of years ago when I saw a couple of reviews saying he needs a sensitivity reader. I was like, <sighs> mm, what's I, th- that? <laughs> I can't because that. horror isn't meant for sensitivity. It's right. Uh, right. And the person should be sort of pushing person, some oh, boundaries. Go That's the point. I was going to say that the person who, who said that probably graduated from college, maybe, and, and which is crazy because they're more like, uh, I don't know, like nursing schools now because it's like they come out of college, they're so thin skinned, and they're like, um, can I have a trigger warning? Can you let me know that there's going to be some content here that I don't like? It's like, read the description. Like, it's. Yeah. Like, if you look at the cover for night Nightwear. Uh, it's pretty clear what it's about. It's pretty clear what you're getting into, <laughs> right? Yeah, I would think. I would think. But what what was the worst of your uh, of this criticism? Of this, I guess, backlash. It's, it hasn't really been a backlash. You just, I've just noticed there's been a you know book reviews today are written compared to they were five or ten years ago. It's different. Um, mm. You know, people come at. Books. I don't know if it's a, if it's a different reader group. I don't know if it's because you know it's a specific reviewer crowd that maybe didn't exist um, years ago. But yeah, you know, some of the reviews are just tone wise different than they used to be. Right. Um, and that's for for the old books as well as the new books, you know. But people people who like the kind of horror that I write like the kind of horror I write, and that's who I'm writing for. I, I'm not writing for mm-hmm. everyone. I'm, I'm not trying to right um, because on the contrary i mean while we talk about the i guess the negative feedback what about the positive feedback i mean you have a lot of books out there and i'm sure you're getting tons of people saying you know i've really enjoyed this book yeah there is and the thing with that's that's the crowd that i hope to please but you you always know and i mean we all feel this way you you pick up a book and you read it you love it and then you look to the author's next one or the last one and often it, it's, oh, it just isn't quite as good as that one. Well, a lot of times the, the story that brings you into an author or a director in movies, that first thing you read of them, it's like an introduction to a whole new world, a whole new language of that person's art. And so that moment, I think, can never 100% be recaptured. So anything that you read or watch in an artist's catalog after that is is often not going to quite stand up, even if you love it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, anytime I have a have someone say, oh, my God, Siren was my absolute favorite book of yours or Covenant was my favorite book of yours. You sort of know it in a certain level. I'm never going to top that for that person again. <laughs> but you hope you try. Right. Yeah, and, I totally understand those, that. For me, it was Anne and then Rice. again, I, I, I still do have. I also have people who you know. There's there's somebody I know who almost every book I write, that that's your best one. I'm like, you said that the last time. Mm. <laughs> See, you you made a fan with me here. I mean, I definitely need a. First off, I need to finish Covenant. It's a series. It's a it's a, it's a trilogy. I need to finish. You know, definitely read the other ones as well. But I might skip and start reading Nightwear uh, later on tonight, or maybe tomorrow, whatever I can. Um, <laughs> Now I just I'm looking at your Amazon page here. Now, are you in with uh, with the V Wars, uh, Jonathan Mayberry? Yeah, Jonathan invited me and a handful of other authors a, a long time ago now um, to write stories in this concept world he had called V Wars, mm-hmm. and we did. It's it's they took the stories and kind of we all had to reference characters and plot 
things that Jonathan had come up with so that it all hung together. But we really wrote independent stories. And then what they did is they sort of chopped those stories up and interspliced them throughout the book. So they were kind of like chapters of interlocking stories. Um, and it's it's a really weird way to me to have created a novel, but it worked. Um, I, when I read it, I was like, wow, this this is really cool that this whole shared world thing came together like that. And then a couple of years later, he said, hey, do you want to uh, write another V-War story for the third book? And I was like, hmm. Yeah, can I can I actually pick up one of my characters from the first one and and take her further? And he said, Yeah, so I did, and that came out in uh, V Wars Night Terrors. And then a couple more years went by, and a a board game came out, a comic book series was done, and then all of a sudden, it sold to Netflix. Yeah, I saw that, <laughs> and I was like, you know, at one point in time, it seems like a long time ago, Jonathan Mayberry was on the show. It was like. I was like, man, I'm talking to this guy. He, he's a legend, too. I mean, he, I'm not saying you're not either. I mean, you, you guys, there's a lot of authors there. They have a, they have established works, and your works are great as well. But it was like, man. But the guy was so down to earth. He was just he was just talking to us. It was great. We're talking about comics. We're talking about comics and uh, Captain America and, like, what they did with them and stuff. Like, Hell Hydra. It's like, what? What? Why is Captain America doing that? <laughs> you know? It was, no, it was great. No, it was great. Jonathan is one of the most amazing people and nobody has the kind of passion for comics and horror and just sort of the fantastic that jonathan does he's an amazing writer he's an amazing person and i you know i was honored to be able to work on two different books with him it was it was amazing hey it, it brought me the first time any of my characters have ever ended up on tv because they did use snippets of my stories and my oh, characters nice. are actually in b wars so Unfortunately, they decided they're not renewing the series for a second mm. season, which sucks because I would really have loved to see where it went. But that's that's dumb. That's so dumb in Netflix. Uh. Okay, I got some more questions in the chat from the chat. Um, John, how many pinball machines do you have? Why? <laughs> and can I have one? That's a serious question. He has a, uh, uh-huh. a shipping address. Yeah, I'm sure he does. Um, <laughs> I have five. Um, and no, you can't. Uh, <laughs> they are all hard won. I've I've been, I got my first pinball machine in 2014, and it's it really brought me into the hobby where I realized there is a hobby. There's a whole subculture of pinball enthusiasts and pinball you know, these enthusiasts. Days, I like that. There there are conventions. My son and I go to two conventions a year, both of which are probably off the books this year, but typically. Um, and yeah, so little by little, I've I've totally gotten an understanding of both the game and all of the machines' histories, and I've looked for very specific machines that I want to own. Um, writing being a, a, a nice hobby that brings a little bit of income doesn't allow me to buy new pinball machines. I'll say that. It does. It it does allow you to buy buy new ones, or does Just it? not? No, uh. no. I mean, you know, the old games from which actually are the ones I like. The the games from the late seventies, early eighties. For whatever reason, that period of machine I absolutely love. Mm-hmm. Um, the new machines obviously have way more electronics and bells and whistles and moving things and all that stuff. But my God, those machines are like six to eight grand if you want to buy. I, one I didn't of even those. know they still make them. Whenever I go to like oh, yeah. a Dave and Buster's, they have all these like. They look like cell phone apps as games. I'm like, what the fuck is this? What is this? <laughs> like, like my, there are more I, I get places, my kid- though, now that they've started that kind of uh, game restaurant kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Um, I've noticed a lot more of those places are, are having pinball machines the, and the new ones, too, which That's is nice. Because then, then you can the play places, them. You can, can't afford to own them. Right. Shit, but yeah, pinball, pinball machines really did transition at a certain point. They stopped being made largely for businesses and started being made largely for the home user because the whole audience changed. Now, are you a master of these balls? I wish. Um, I, I'm a lot better now than I was before COVID. I can tell you that. Okay. So I have, many, I've spent many... about two hours a night for the last four months playing my machines. So how many balls can you handle at once? <laughs> I'm, I'm asking a serious question here. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why you're laughing. Oh. It, it, it's um, a pinball question. How many balls can you handle at once? Uh, well, it, in my house, two, because I don't have a machine that does more than that. So, uh-huh. 
two is the right answer, I guess. <laughs> uh, uh, but no, uh, pinball, pinball's fun. Pinball's fun. Uh, the other question is favorite B horror movie. I usually ask this question anyway towards the end, but I guess I ask it now. What is your favorite B horror 